What's up? What's up? I'll tell you what's up. Screw the entrance. Screw the entrance. Screw the music. Screw, sh screw all that. I'm just going to tell you right now. I just want to get this review out of the way. I'm going to give you a few facts. Fact. Hangover 1 was funny. Fact. Hangover 2 was unnecessary, but it was funny. Fact. Hangover 3 sucks pure balls. Not only does it suck balls, it's licked the balls, it's messed with the tip, and it's swallowed the freaking gravy. It's that bad. <sighs> Nick, I know what you're probably, I know what you guys are probably saying. Nick, why does this movie suck so bad? I thought you loved the Hangover films. We well, you know what I do. The first one was funny. It made sense. The girls had nice tits, <laughs> and the story actually made, like I said, the story actually made friggin' sense. Oh, I'm gonna need a bunch of glass of that tonight. So, why does this movie suck so bad? Story. This story is basically all about Alan. It's Alan at age 42, after the second one, of course. But the movie begins... I'm, this doesn't even feel like a hangover movie. It doesn't feel like a hangover movie. You get, you get like a James Bond vibe, to be honest with you. You get a James Bond vibe in this movie. I mean, like, I mean it shows Chow breaking out of jail. Yeah. That's not funny. I mean, he's like, yeah, mother was. Like, he's saying mother effer in almost every single part of the movie, but that's chow. He says that word almost every 15 seconds. Ugh. So, yeah, he breaks out of prison, and then they show Alan driving down the street with a giraffe. This actually, I thought, was pretty funny. There, this, There's hardly any funny scenes in this movie. Like, it's all serious. I mean, yeah, I mean, the movies are serious, but they're com a combination of serious... And freaking hilariousness. So, yeah, Alan's driving down the street. He bought a freaking giraffe. <laughs> and uh, he's driving down the street. And he's like, hey, my life is great! Hey, my name's Alan! I just bought a giraffe! And this kid's looking at him going like, okay. And so then he goes under one bridge. And he's not even paying attention. And it says low, like, you know, like when you go on the interstate. And you go into one of those low bridges. It cuts the giraffe's head off. And the family's like, Mom, that's a giraffe. Where do you think it's going? Whack, right in your windshield. So then it caused like a big freaking massacre. And then he goes home and his dad's like all pissed off talking to the mayor. He's like, do you know how many checks I had to sign to get your butt out of this? It's like, I'm freaking 42. Yeah, you're a 42-year-old man living with your family. Like, I can't put up with this anymore. You're going to have to. He puts on his headphones. This is just how much of a dick. Alan is. He's listening to music. His dad's having a heart attack. Alan! Alan! I was actually kind of laughing. I was like, wow, is he really this much of a dick? And, um, and he's just laughing. He, I mean, I'm just laughing because I thought it was funny. And then we get to the funeral. He's like, he has a voice of an angel. I know, it's awesome. And then he's like, take it away, chief. And then they talk about his dad. And then they're at the funeral. And he's like, we're going to get, we're do, we're going to do a, um, we're going to do an intervention for Alan. Intervention, yeah. We're going to take him to this place in Oklahoma. And now, see, here's the thing. They know that Alan will not go unless the other three go. So, yeah, they're screwed. So, they meet him at the house. Like, they're all in there. And it's like his two only best friends that live around who he swims with and went to school together or whatever. And his uh, nurse is there along with the mom and the sister. And uh, they're all saying stuff. They're like, Alan, I pick up after you for 30 years. I have picked up stuff no one should have to ever touch, but I pick it up because I love you. I love you. And then he spills over his coke. Oh, you are such a douche, man. These people are, are trying to help you. Of course, you know, this. whenever you take anyone to an intervention, it either works out or it doesn't. It, it normally goes, okay, I know I have a problem, and I'm going my best to quit. Or it's like, that's a pretty mean way to get your dad to go to an intervention. So yeah, they get, take him to an intervention, and they decide, hey, we'll take him. So yeah, then all of a sudden, they get pulled, they're on the road, they get pulled over by these people. It's this big fat guy, the guy, I forget his name, but he played Roseanne, and he, did, and he played Fred, Flint, Fred Flintstone, and uh, he does the voice for Sully, and yeah, that guy. So they're talking about how Chow stole 20, uh, $40 million in gold. 
So, yeah, basically, Doug gets taken again, and Black Doug shows up. Yeah, Black Doug. It's just Doug now! So, like, yeah, they all get into... This movie is basically... I was like, really? Are you guys... Where's the funny? Where's the... Drunk, getting drunk, waking up, and realizing, oh, crap, we screwed up. Yeah, this is all apparently Chow's fault and Alan's fault. Because Alan's the only one who talks to him. So it's like, only one pe person is in touch with him, and that's you, fat boy! So yeah, basically all they're trying to, all they're gonna do, they, they're gonna find Chow, try to take him back. Yeah, so they find him the first time, and they meet up, and Chow's like, was I a fat boy? Was he followed? No. Give me some sugar. I, I swear, are you gay? I mean, are you freaking gay? I mean, I mean, come on. I know that's Chow's character. I, I, I'm, I'm rambling. So, yeah, they're going to knock him out. They're just going to give him a simple syringe, knock him out, take him. Easy. When, in fact, it's like, where's the other ones? You're, my, you're the only friend I can trust. Stan's your friend. Where is he? So, yeah, he goes all psycho. He gets a rock. He destroys the glass. And then they're all talk. They make up this bull crap. Like, uh, we miss you, man. We miss you. So then he goes to karaoke. And he's karaoke sucks. So then they take the syringe. They put the stuff in his drink. And, of course, B he's smart. He's like, Take him, take it, take it, take it. Why do you want to, why do you want a drug towel? Why do you want a drug towel? Why do you want a drug towel? And then they tell him. And he's like, oh, dang it. So then they, he talks about how he has three, how he has three homes, and one's in Mexico. They have to go and they have to go to Mexico. They find him in Mexico, and um, so yeah, they find him in Mexico. They find this big house. He makes up some bullcrap story about how about how he uh, got how he lost everything after he went to prison, and how uh, someone's living in his house now. And so they sneak into the house. They drug the dogs, take off the dog collar, sneak in. Disarm the... Uh, apparently, Chow's colorblind. It's like, grab the green... The middle gray wire. All I have is red... Oh, yeah, by the way, I'm kind of blind. What? Why didn't you tell us that? Yes. Chow is colorblind. Oh, wait, 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 which one's left? I'm also dyslexic. Like, Gosh darn it, just give me... Do you have the wire in your hand? So, yeah, they have to clip the wire at the same time. Because if they don't, the security alarm will go off. So, he talks about how... Uh, how he put the money, all this gold, behind this brick wall. So, they break in, destroy the brick wall, take all the gold out, Chow locks them inside, and then they get taken to the office in Mexico, and then their bail gets paid by that same guy, and it's like, you didn't steal the money. You stole the half that I had. You didn't break into Chow's house. You broke into my house. So, yeah, basically, he shoots Black Doug. It's like, <gasps> My head of security, and he couldn't even get past three dim effers and a stupid, and a, and a stupid little Chinese man. So yeah, they've got they've got like two more days to save Doug. They got to get Chow. So then they, uh, Alan is actually pretty smart right here. Instead of him being a pussy, um, he actually he uh, they um, he takes the he takes their minivan. And uh, he leaves his cell phone in the minivan, and this is actually smart. They use an uh, app to find your car, and it's all the way in Las Vegas. So they're like, oh, we got to go to Las Vegas. They should burn this place to the ground, like in the trailers. And that, this, that was actually pretty smart, using the app to find the car. But I digress. They find the phone. They find out that he's in the one with the strobe lights, you know, the one that could give you a freaking seizure. And uh, they go to this pawn Oh, I tell you, this is so hilarious. They go to this pawn shop, and they find out that he... Um, went to a pawn shop, they find out they went to the, this pawn shop, and they're like, what do you think he would do with the gold here? And it says, cash for gold. Cash for gold. I was like, really? Okay, yes, we get it. He turned in the cash for money, the gold for money. We ain't stupid. So, he goes to the hotel. Alan meets this chick who's fat and lives with her mom, and is like, you want to eat what I tell you to? Now you get back there before I kill you! Yeah, these people are exactly the same. I say one of the grossest things I have ever seen. He gets information out of her, and then he gets a lollipop. He's like... And then he puts it in her mouth, and they're like... <coughs> Actually, they didn't throw up, but I was about to. And so then they set up this mission to where they're going to have Steve stay in the limo, and Stan and Alan are going to go drug him Take him down to the limo. Yeah, that doesn't happen. 
again. Where's the comedy? I mean, there's some comedy, but this feels like a freaking spy movie. This isn't spy. This isn't a spy movie. It's freaking Hangover. It's oh my head. What the? There's a tiger in the bathroom. Yeah, wh where's that? Where's the? I have a tattoo in my head. I got screwed by a guy. And instead, it's like okay. Oh yeah, another reason how Alan is a douche in this movie, like he is in the other ones, but he's just so much more. He's. They have to climb down from the top of the building down to Chow's room. And so what they do is um, Stan goes first, and he's on these blank on the towel, all these towels. No, no, blankets, blankets. And they hook him onto the, this thing, and they climb down. He's like, hey, Alan! Or he's like, hey, Stan, what? I need to take a picture. I was like, dude, really? Are you kidding me? No one is this much of a... Well, actually, probably people are this much of a douche. But, I mean, they were just trying... They were throwing so much at us about how much of a douche he is. Yes, we get it. Alan is a douche. He is a child. He is a freaking douchebag. We get it. Get to the plot, please. And I'm just sitting there. I laughed every now and then, but I mean, it was boring as heck. I and mean, a bunch of my friends were like, yeah, it's okay, but it's not like as good as the first two. I was, and after watching this, box office epic fail. So yeah, they get Chow. They put him in the trunk. They drive. The fat guy's like, here, we made a deal. Chow's in the trunk. So then they start shooting it. Alan, since Alan is the only friend Chow has, he lets Chow free. Chow gets the gun, shoots him, and then Alan decides, finally grow up. He's like, hey, I realize I can't be friends with you anymore. And then he's like, whenever we get together, bad things happen. Of course, that's why it's funny. Yeah. So basically, Chow, him and Chow do their gay breakup. I mean, I swear, these two were have to, have to be freaking gay with each other. I mean, yes, they're both funny comedians, but their characters are just so freaking gay. And, like, Chow kept going, like, come on, guys, let me suck your penis. Let me suck your cock. I'll make you, I can make a good wife. I will cut your freaking hands off. I'm, I'm sorry, Chow loses his temper. I will freaking kill you. Yeah, I don't know if he's bipolar or just, he, oh, oh, he jumps off the building, right? And he's like, you can't kill me. And he jumps off and he parachutes and uh, he's like, oh, this looks so pretty. I love cocaine! And then um, Stan's driving after, uh, Steve's driving after him. He's like, I can't keep up with him. I'm just a freaking dentist. No, Steve, you're not just a dentist. You're a freaking doctor. Yes. Giving him, telling him he's a doctor makes him unmotivated. His balls grew. <gasps> yes, I'm a doctor. Now I will catch this agent. He hits him. It's like, I think I killed him. Suck your penis. I'll make you feel good if you let me have the money. I'll make you a deal. No more deals, Chow. Finally, you realize this little freak cannot be trusted. So yeah, movie ends. They go back to they go to Las Vegas. They get the minivan. Alan says, "Hey, I need to do something. You know how to get back? Yes, I know how to get back. I'm a grown man." So he stays, and he talks to that chick again. And uh, he's like, I want to take you to the casino. Well, I can't have been banned. So they make out. And then all of a sudden, he just pulls down his pants. He's just like, yep, let's do it. And the chick's like, why don't we wait a little bit? Sorry, sorry. It's okay. So then they're like, eh, eh, eh. I'll see you at 8 o'clock. And then all of a sudden, six months later, he gets married. And uh, he's like, guys, I got some bad news. I'm going to have to break away from the wolf pack. Especially you, man. I'm tired of being your hero. You can't look at me as your hero anymore. He's like, okay. So, um, then he's like, she's my best friend now. I bang her. Dude, we don't want to know, but, oh, please, I've seen you bang my sister plenty of times. What? So, yeah. It's like, are you ready? Yep. Movie ends. If they make a fourth one, I swear, they're going to have to do something better than this. Hangover is not a freaking spy film. And that is exactly what this was. I've give, I give this movie almost, I'm barely giving it two stars. At least two and a half. Guys, I'm the Phenomenal Critic. If you really want to watch this movie, trust me, it's not that good. Thanks. Subscribe. Please subscribe. Check out my other videos. I'll be making more characters soon. Check out my new show, The Morning Segment. Click and subscribe.